Uh, I know it's been kind of a rough year, but you know, when I graduated in 68, we all got drafted, okay? You guys, you have to sit home and watch TV. Well, that's not so bad, but this coronavirus thing will be over. Besides, you can watch Buzz and the Bend. That's, that's what I've been doing the whole time. Love that show. From our studios at Riley High School, it's time for Michiana's award-winning student talk show, Buzz in the Bend. Hello, and welcome to Buzz in the Bend, Michiana's award-winning student talk show. I'm Ethan Hems from Riley High School. And I'm Marisha Brown from Clay High School. So how do you feel about 2020? <sighs> Where to begin? Where to begin with that? It's September. It yeah. Is, it is late September. And it's going to be October. Exactly. I don't... <laughs> Where did the year go? Exactly. And then it's like, all these years I've just been staying home all the time just because I wanted to. Yeah. But then we had to stay home. <laughs> and then it's just, it's just like, I don't want this anymore. This is not, this is not yeah. what I want. <laughs> it's just been crazy. It's just been crazy. Yeah. So, on Friday, September 18th, Americans mourned the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I took a look into this amazing woman's life. I am, as you know, a Brooklynite, born and bred, a first-generation American on my father's side, barely second-generation on my mother's. Neither of my parents had the means to attend college. What has become of me could happen only in America, like so many others. I owe so much to the entry this nation afforded to people yearning to breathe free. On September 18th, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away at her home in Washington, D.C. at the age of 87 years old due to complications from pancreas cancer. RBG, as she has been called, is an American Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States from 1993 until her death in 2020. She was the second woman and first Jewish woman to serve on the Supreme Court. As an Associate Justice on the court, Ginsburg wrote opinions that championed both gender and racial equality. What gives you the most hope for the future? My granddaughters. I'm very proud of my eldest granddaughter who is a lawyer. She and other young people like her I think will help us get back on track. So it's pretty sad, like, it's just been a crazy 2020 and on top of that, she had to pass away. Yeah. And she's basically the reason why, like, gay marriage is, like, legal. It, it things won't definitely be the same after her passing, I will say that. She's already been greatly missed, but her impact will never leave, I don't think. Like, for what she did. And I hope, hopefully, here's hoping we get a good replacement. Yeah, and then, well, she can't be replaced. That's like, true, that's true. Yeah, yeah. you got a point there. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, on September 23rd, like, they had a remor memorial, and then we had a live on that, so. Because I remember seeing it, like, all over the news and everything, like, all the memorials and all that, it was just mm, tragic. Yeah. The South Bend Community School Board met up this past Monday for a virtual Zoom meeting to discuss the prospect of going back to school in person. The original idea was to have the students return to the school buildings on October 5th on a split schedule. However, voting was pushed to next Monday, the 28th. So, how do you feel about coming back to school, maybe? <laughs> A part of me is like, oh, I don't want to go back to school. Like, I prefer just being at home in my mm -hmm. pajamas, like with my cat, just chilling. Yeah. Then another part of me is like, okay, like you get distracted when you're just like at home all the time. Like, yeah. So then like I wasn't turning in my work, and then I, it was just piling up and piling up. But when you're at school, like you're there, so the directions are more clear than just reading it. Off yeah. It, it it's because we're like so. Uh, like, section to believe that, every, like, through our entire school life, we've gone through just being in this classroom. So now that we're home, it's hard to, like, motivate ourselves to get all the work done. Yeah. So, at least that's what I find hard anyway. Yeah, just trying to find the motivation to 
to, to get the work done and everything. Yeah, last year was a lot easier too because you got to know the teachers in person. Yeah. And then like you already know how they are when you when you when we stayed home. So then it was like easy, but then now it's like I don't even know the people. Like yeah, just... I, I I've seen I've seen my teachers in the hallways before, but do I really know them? Not, yeah, not, not really. <laughs> like I've seen their faces, but I don't know how they are as teachers. Yeah. And like even online now, it's like you don't really know how they are because it, never. It's been... not hundred percent how they would normally teach anyway. Yeah. It's it's some modified version of it. I will say though that uh, going back in person would be nice, but it's not really like the safest bet right now. Exactly, and then like I feel like I don't know how they're gonna do it, but hopefully they do it where certain students go on certain days, because like in other countries, like when we had the COVID thing, mm -hmm. like they had they had it shut down, but like on certain days, then you would just do it by like ID number. Yeah, but that's I heard, I, I heard that's what's similar to having here with split scheduling, where they get like last names like go split down the last names, go for two days, then the other half go for the next two days, and Friday's online for everyone, I presume. Yeah, so. that's how, like, that would be a good idea. That's, a, that's like a good compromise for everything, to try and keep, like, in-person learning and e-learning still together <laughs> without the that much risk. <laughs> yeah. So, in spite of COVID, athletics has been going strong. Sports Zones has the story. Welcome to the week three edition of SBS TV Sports Zone. We're your hosts, Commander Jenkins. And Davis Holley. Week four of football. Season has passed us, and some teams has picked up some wins. Going over to school field, we have saw Ben Washington taking on Elkhart High School. They lost in a dominant fashion, 67 to seven. Uh, and this drops them to one and four on the season. So David, how do you feel about Washington and Elkhart? Well, you know, like Elkhart's a really good school. Um, they, they're playing their best football in years now. So um, as, as the merger, you know, they merged from Elkhart Memorial to Elkhart um, Central. And it, it shows that they're pretty good, you know. Like, how do you think Washington is like feeling about this loss, you know? Uh, well, um, Washington, they're just looking forward. They're just trying to bounce back from this loss. They're just trying to improve and see if they can get a win, you know. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, once again, um, Elkhart, they had just beat Washington. They also had beat Penn. They beat Penn by like a touchdown. It was it was really close game. It was Washington actually, came in as like one of the underdogs yeah. you know, trying to come up to like beating mm -hmm. a good team. But, yeah. you know. They just, Washington has some things to work on, you know. Um, their coach, Todd Stamich, yeah, he, he has some things that, he, you know, he's never going to quit on his team and he has some great important things to say, you know, yeah. teach them. They're just lessons that can be learned. South Bend Adams put their undefeated record on the line as they traveled to St. Joe and they lost a close one, 14 to 21. They are now three and two on the year. You know, like um, I was actually uh, watched our highlights. It was very close. St. Joe actually stopped them on their last drive and they ended up taking a dub. dub. Yeah, but Adams, you know, then this is this is something that they needed early. They just needed they needed this loss so they can learn from it and they can just grow because. If they just go into the season just thinking like nobody can beat them, it's like they might they might play a little bit less to their potential. Yeah, because they think that they're yeah. better than that. It's like they'd just be like, all right, I don't have to play my best because we're already better than everyone, and then boom, they. But now they, yeah. they know how it feels. They know how it feels to lose. So now they got to get their I, team right back. And every know, team back together. Every team's probably like that, you know. Like every team doesn't like would rather lose in the regular season compared to in the playoffs, anyways. Yeah, the playoffs is really what matters. Yeah. So, uh, moving on, we have lastly South Bend Clay taking on South Bend Riley as they hosted their senior night at Jackson Field. Uh. Last Friday night at Jackson Field, as the Riley Wildcats seniors were celebrating their senior night, the Clay Colonials were preparing to take the field and hopefully the win. Their head coach has some positive comments on his team. Definitely better things to come. Um, I think we're changing the culture over there at Clay. The guys are really hungry and they believe that they can win. You know, our motto this year is why not us? And that's what they believe. I asked Coach what he thought the highlight of the team was. I think our defense is uh, playing really strong this year. You know, we gave up 28 last week, but it wasn't the defense. The defense actually only gave up one touchdown. Um, it was some uh, unforced errors uh, that caused uh, them to get 21. So I think our defense is playing really strong, and that's, that should be the highlight of it. 
definitely built confidence. Uh, you know, Clay was used to losing 50 to nothing, you know, every week. So getting that first win definitely built some confidence and uh, got the guys believing that they can win football games. I got the chance to interview Clay's captain as he has some great things to say about his team. We really a family this year. And we really want to, we just really want to play for each other. Uh, we want to do something different over at Clay. We want to change the program around than what it's been the past few years. Uh, we want to make a run in sectionals. No matter how long it is, we just want to make a run. With the SPS TV Sports Zone, I'm Blake Wesson. Thanks, Blake. The Riley Wildcats end up winning 45 to 8. The Clay Cloners dropped down to 4 1 for the season. Now the Wildcats are 2 and 3. You know, like the Wildcats, they, they bounced back. They started off the season as 0 and 3. Yes, they did. And they just picked up two great wins one against Clay and then another against a team in Gary, Gary Westside. Yes, yeah. Gary Westside. So uh, Riley's picking up some steam. They finally found their groove and they're on their way to success. You know, so, they're on their streak yeah. now. They're on their streak. Clay, Clay dropped a couple games. They're uh, sitting at one and four. They lost to Riley, and then they lost to Washington back-to-back -back school um, South Bend games. But still, you know they're they're still hungry. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. they're never gonna give up. I mean, they I, got that first win, so you know they're gonna keep yeah. fighting until they get another one. Exactly. They had a couple captains that we actually got to talk to, and you know one of their players, it was like his second year. His name's Kenneth Lax. You know he yeah. he stepped up and he was playing his best games. You know, like. He, he kept them in the game against um, Washington whenever they played against each other, yeah. So uh, they're just hoping to pick up a couple more wins and get ready for the playoffs. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. So next up, we had Commander Jenkins capturing our Student Athlete of the Week. I went out to the boys' rally soccer team and spoke with Cody Andes as he was chosen for SBS TV Sports Zone first student profile segment, and he talked about how he developed since freshman year. This freshman year, I've become a lot more confident on the field. Um, I know as a freshman, it can be scary, especially with like 18 year olds and big kids on the other team. But I feel like I've developed a lot better since freshman year, and I definitely feel a lot more comfortable. The reason that Andis was highlighted was because of his heroic efforts in a semifinal game of the Mishawaka Soccer Tournament. Down to the last 10 minutes, then there's a PK shot for them. I saved it, but the ref said that I stepped off the line too early. So we did it again, and I saved it again. We went to the final and beat Mishawaka 2-0. And my parents, they've always been pushing me to be out here and get better. Um, Coach John Boy, he always pushes us. Uh, sometimes too hard, but you know. Um, and I say my teammates, they definitely help out on the field, and they always support each other. The rally head coach says some great things about Cody and his impact on the team. Sure, well, he's always given 110%. Uh, he's uh, just leaves everything on the field. Uh, if you ever come to one of our games, you'll see that he just sweated all the way through. He can play 80 minutes as, as long as we need him. He stays out there in the heat or in the in the cold. I think they look up to him. Uh, they definitely he's a leader on the team. His his contribution, and I think some of the younger kids probably are saying, "I want to be like him." So. Run out three! Run out three! One, two, three! Riley! With SBS TV Sports Zone. I'm Commander Jenkins. So Notre Dame beat South, um, South Florida last Saturday, 52 to zero. They're now two and zero on the season. So um, they, they won in a dominant fashion. You know, they scored multiple touchdowns. Their defense did really well. They didn't give up a single score, not even points, a field goal. That's a lot. Exactly. So uh, South Florida now sits at 0 and two on the year. They're looking for a bounce back. But Notre Dame actually had their game canceled tomorrow night against Wake Forest because on Tuesday, some of their players tested positive for the virus, and that just ruined their chances of having a game. So yeah, that, that sucks, having yeah. one of your players get COVID-19. Exactly. And y'all are already like ready for a game. It's like, yeah, first of all, they want to make sure that their player is safe and healthy and just um, survives um, this, this virus. Uh, but a lot, of, a lot of Notre Dame fans are really disappointed with this one as they're really looking forward to Notre Dame playing. And was it going to be a home game? Too? No, it was going to be an away game, but uh, they were going to watch them at home, yeah. uh, like on the TV, you know. It, it just, sucks. yeah. Yeah, but, you know, um, this is just a, just, just a factor of what happens when COVID-19 in our new society. SBS TV Sports Zone invites you to send us any footage of South Bend schools, um, athletics, Send us your posters and send us your school songs. You can send this to our Facebook page at sbstv slash WETL or email us at davidsale 2 at gmail.com. Tonight we have the Riley Wildcats taking on Washington Panthers at school field. The Adams Eagles will be taking on New Prairie on the road. 
Lastly, the Clay Colonials will be taking on Gemtown on the road. Thanks for tuning in on our third week edition of SBST Sports Zone. I'm David Saleh. And I'm Commander Jenkins. Thanks for watching. The North Pacific wildfires have been going for weeks. Mishawaka's Red Cross volunteers have been lending a hand. Alan Powell has a story. Oregon and other states like Arizona have been suffering from wildfires. We asked Doug Farmwald, Red Cross volunteer from South Bend, to explain what he has seen and has been doing in the field and what the causes are. This is a major operation for Red Cross out here. Right now, the last uh, that I heard, we had about 899 people total assigned to the Oregon fires. So I'm just one of a pretty large team. We will go in after the active firefighting is over, assess the damage to individual households to help them qualify for assistance from either FEMA or the state uh, or the county. Um, there are, are a scale of damage classifications you know, from destroyed, major, minor, affected. Um, what you see in wildfires, either something is destroyed or it's merely cosmetic damage, like perhaps some of the siding melted. Um, mm. It didn't really damage the house per se. Um, so you get into an area where the, the fire went through and, and we're near three little towns here, Phoenix and uh, Talon and Glide, Oregon, which were almost entirely consumed by the fire. And there is nothing but foundations left of the houses, occasionally perhaps a chimney. Folks out here lost literally everything that they could not throw in the back of the truck and, and get out. A number of different causes, uh, uh, most of them were sparked by lightning. Uh, they get a lot of dry lightning out here in the mountains and they haven't had any rain here in about three months. So everything is incredibly dry and a lightning strike will easily start a fire. Um, you've probably seen in the news where there was one major fire started by a gender reveal party. Um, oh, yeah. And a pyrotechnic device that kind of got out of hand. So, you know, there are some human causes. The vast majority of them have been caused um, by lightning strikes. The audiovisual CTE class has been busy this week working more on our film study course. Isaac Hernandez has the story. Uh, we are doing uh, scene by scene recreations of famous films. I chose the scene from the plane Dynamite uh, where they're slapping each other, him and Kip, and then uh, he answers the door to Deb. I love Napoleon Dynamite and I thought it was like the four minutes of the movie where more things were happening in that short amount of time. The scene that I choose was uh, the scene from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air where Will Father leaves and we, we are reacting to that scene. It was very emotional. The challenges were trying to put in the right time and trying to get the image of that scene again, but instead it took us more than two days to do actually taking the script learning the different shots that the actual scene took because it was a difficult shots movement shots and we just try to reenact them replay them um, and it was quite difficult getting the perfect like timing down for everything and like getting the appropriate shots and scene for it because depending on like depending on like the scene we chose for our group uh, it was hard to get like a specific like good room for it so we can like get a proper shot for it that was accurate to the movie but we made it work the very best we could. Uh, fighting the natural lighting uh, inside the house. Overall, just uh, trying to get the right timing of when we're speaking uh, because we had to match it up with the actual scene. We have to be flexible and we have to not see the scene through our eyes, but see it through the director's and editor's eyes. And because it was their, it was their vision, their image, and we had to like try to play it through their image. Having a good atmosphere uh, in your workspace uh, helps the entire crew overall and improves the, the speed of the process and the, the accuracy. When, when you do get everybody on the same wavelength though, it's worth it. So come down today for your free child lesson! So, um, how was it for you? How was it for your group? I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. We had a lot of fun recording. Editing was just a blast. I, 
I had a great time with it. How was? How does your group do with it? Yeah, because y'all didn't you guys have um, like y'all went to each other's house and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went to one of our classmates' houses just to do, do some recording. And it was really nice. And we even saw like I, I brought the movie that we were doing a scene from in there. I brought it. We watched it there. It was great time. How do you guys? Yeah. How do you think you guys did? Ours was okay. I don't know really how it turned out so far. And then you know, one person was doing the editing. I just did like the script. Mm-hmm. Like all I did was just kind of tell the people the script. Like help, help off stage. Yeah, help the line with yeah. the lines. <laughs> Live studio audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it stinks in here. Oh, it must be done then. Wait a minute. Oh. For three long days, my dry rub caramelized casserole a la meme review. I, I, I can't get it open. It's, it's tape shut. Good, because I don't think Gordon Ramsay would approve of this. Well, I approve of it at least. All right, on to the slides. All righty. First meme. There's a snake in my boot. There's a, there's a snake in my boot. I mean, bro, he has no nose. He's, yeah. he's, 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 he's peering down at his footwear to see what sort of uh, scaled creature might be residing within his footwear. What sort of reptilian? Next meme. Yeah. Th- this. <laughs> to like all squares with vehicles. This is a, someone I've come across. They actually do, a, they ask you to do a captcha, which, which uh, like, I can find with. Originally, you have like the sign was like, what does it say? And it's just like some random words, like words or letters, something yeah. like that. But these new ones, they're so confusing to me because of this reason alone. You get these small, like tiny pixels in there of one square that doesn't <laughs> belong in the grid. And you think, I, I don't know if this is right or not. Exactly. Like I miss when it was just like random letters and numbers. Yeah. Cause like I remember helping my mom out. Like she would just be like, um, can you type this for me? You know. Is, is your I'm mom blind. a robot? <laughs> 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 Let's go to the next meme. <laughs> when you're hiding from a killer in a, in a dark room and your light up sketch is off. <laughs> if if this if this 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 killer is a man of class, he should know that I have the the tightest of shoes. The light up sketchers are like the quintessential part of the outfit there. So if he just like sees the light up sketchers, he opens the closet door and is like. You got light up sketches in here, man? Like, I didn't know. I'm so sorry, man. I didn't I didn't know you were I was in the in the presence of such royalty. Yeah, I'm gonna let you go, you know. And that does it for this week's edition of Buzz and the Ben. As always, be sure to click that subscribe button and tap the bell icon to get notified when we upload a new video. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Tune in to our 24-7 studio radio station, WETL 91.7 FM The Mix. Have, Have a great, great day. day.